Hi, in this video I will start with the very basics of our Angular 2 applications, with the project structure and what the core parts of our application are. Now I already have my well very basic application here set up and in the description you will find a link to the github repository which will have several branches for several well states of this series and there you will find a setup branch which is this state what you see here so basically if you want to know how to well set up a project from scratch watch my setup video I got on this channel too where I explain how to set up my well custom built boilerplate for Angular 2 applications. So I'm in this application and what this currently does is display this page. Well that isn't that useful but um, it has all the basics of an Angular 2 application in it. Now the boilerplate I'm using here has a structure where I have an app, an assets, a dev, and a source folder for my code. Source and app will hold the compiled code, so TypeScript compiled to JavaScript, and SCSS compiled to CSS. And the uncompiled code, which is the code we will actually work with, lives in the assets folder in case of the SCSS code, and the dev folder in case of the TypeScript code. And we're of course writing our application in TypeScript here. So in this folder I got my app component here and my boot.ts file. Let's start with this boot.ts file. What this file does is it bootstraps our application. It loads up our Angular 2 application. This is the part where everything starts and we need this application. We need this file and this bootstrap method here specifically for everything to work otherwise we wouldn't have anything any application we also have this index.html file here in our root directory well this file imports a couple of dependencies or a couple of things we need for application and this might very well change a bit until angular 2 is released but basically it contains some polyfills we need for angular 2 to work correctly in older browsers it contains Angular 2 itself as well as the router and the HTTP module because we're going to use this and it also contains our XJS which are our, our observables and system JS which is just our well loader which will load the components or the JavaScript files we need for the current page to render correctly. System.js is set up here in this script part here where we basically define the root folder app where all our JavaScript files will live in and that it should start with the app boot file, the bootstrap file, to load up our application. This is the structure we have. Now I also said we have this app component and here is a key part, a component. Angular 2 applications are made up of components. Angular 2 embraces the web component standard and when we build an Angular 2 application we create many components which we then put together to get one single page in the end. And of course all these components are then rendered together into one single DOM but we create our application by, well, bottom up, so to say, by creating these tiny pieces, these components. Now, I do have videos on this channel where I explain this whole concept and explain the overall architecture of an application. But to give you a, blick, uh, but to give you a quick overview, we basically do have components which make up our app, our DOM in the end, too. We have directives and components are just directives and directives in the end are only certain commands, instructions so to say, we place in our HTML code which tell Angular 2 to do something when it finds these instructions. For example, in our component case here, this instruction would be in our index.html file, this myapp tag. 
my app is not a default HTML element, of course, but it is a directive. An instruction Angular 2 will be able to handle because we tell it how to handle it. In our app component file, we're setting a selector, which is also my app. And this is no coincidence, of course. By setting up my app as a selector here, Angular 2 is able to render whatever we define here in the template of our component in this place here, where we set up, or where we place this custom-made component by placing this instruction, this directive here, my app, which is, as I said, found by Angular 2, matched as we have set it up here as a selector, and then it renders whatever we specify here as a template. Of course, our selectors therefore have to be Unix so that Angular 2 knows when to render what. We of course may use a component multiple times in our DOM, but if we want to have two different components of the same little selector, that won't work the way we want. Now, okay, I was talking about the selector, this template. What is this? What is this add component thing here? Well, this is a default TypeScript class which will be compiled down to JavaScript code that actually runs in every browser nowadays. And we an annotate this class with this metadata. This is just some metadata and we can attach metadata in TypeScript by using this add notation here. This is some metadata defined by Angular 2 which can be attached to any class and this kind of transforms this class into a component. Technically, of course, it stays a class, but it, well, provides some annotation which allows Angular 2 when it comes over this class to know that this class is actually a component. And a component has several features and one very important one is that it has a view which is rendered, the template we specify here. This is what will actually be rendered to the DOM and this, this header here is what we're seeing here at the top. This is rendered by Angular 2 knowing that this is a component and that it has this template which should be rendered whenever it finds this my app selector here. So this is our component decorator which basically contains some configuration for this component so that this configuration or so that this component is displayed the way or used the way we want. That's our project structure that are the key parts of an Angular 2 application and this is, in a nutshell, in a very short explanation, of course, how components work, how we configure them, and why we configure them the way. Now, of course, in the next videos, we will see more configuration being added to this component. We'll see multiple components. We'll see how we can output dynamic data in our components. We'll see how we can make components work together across several, well, components. And how we can access the web to fetch data and much more. And if you want to dive into some concepts a little bit deeper right now, you might have a look at the other videos on this channel where I do talk about a lot of Angular 2 things already. See you in the next videos. Bye.